guys, it's Couple of Dabblers, it's Floz and JP. So today we're going to talk about something that's uh, quite, uh, I guess, conducive to this channel and hopefully to our followers, and that is the top five TV shows that we think are good while hobbying. So I know a lot of, I've got a lot of friends who do similar hobbies to me, um, such as, you know, painting, um, and they say, oh, I can't, I can't paint and watch something at the same time. So what we're saying is that these are kinds of shows that can be watched, but in a kind of a peripheral way, you know, it's in the background, like you look up every now and again, and you know, it, maybe they're in a new scene or something, you'll look up like, oh yeah, they're in a new scene, and then you can kind of just listen to the sounds that are being offered and get an idea of exactly what's going on. So the storyline's interesting enough, so you can watch it or you want to keep watching, but it's not so exciting or so action-packed that you have to look up and see exactly what's going on. So I guess that's the good thing about these series. Yeah, so let's get into the list. So our first one, and probably I'd say uh, number one and most uh, broad-reaching, so I think most of our audience will agree that this is a good show to watch while hobbying, and that is Doc, Doc Martin. Martin. Yes. Doc Martin. <laughs> yes, yeah, you get it if you watch it. It's a set in in the kind of uh, south of England, so they've all got these wonderful accents, and it's yeah, very charming. So it's pretty much about a doctor from the big city coming down to this very small rural town to be a normal GP. Um, other people don't know, but he's actually scared of blood, and that's why he came down. And then. There's all these storylines about different people living in that town and also what happens to him after he moved out. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a smart know-it-all doctor that doesn't have a bedside manner kind of thing. You know, he doesn't care what the person thinks or making them feel good. He just, you know, assesses their health, tells them what they need to do, and if they don't want to do it, then he thinks they're an idiot. I can't keep him home. I've got to work. We'll get your husband to help. Oh, sure. If I mention him for we'll ditch his girlfriend straight away, drive overnight from Glasgow and give our marriage one more try. Good. Um, and so that's what really the funny thing is, because the town is, in a way, full of lots of idiots, but it's mainly just because it's just a small country town by the sea, um, so, you know, no one really knows any better. Um, and it's, it's just really quite charming. It goes for a long time. Lots of episodes. That's what helps with a hobby one. You don't want something that's just 10 episodes, 20 minutes each, and you're done, because, you know, you, you won't be anywhere near the end of your cross stitch or your painting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I think that's probably our number one because it's just, it's mm. so good. And it's also um, serial in the way that, so we, I'll, I'll say things are serial in that you can pick nearly any episode if you want to go back to it and you can just watch it. It doesn't have to really rely on you knowing the previous episode or anything like that. So It's also very family friendly. Mm. I know, at least in terms of crafting, a lot of uh, people have families or they tend to be a bit older. Um, so you have to consider, uh, you've got the little ones running around, you don't want something too, you know, um, cheeky or too adult themed. Um, Doc Martin's great in that regard. So there's no swearing, nothing too violent, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, nothing that might offend anyone. It's just, you know, lighthearted. And the medical knowledge is on point as well. It's actually... Yes, we actually looked up quite a few terms and they were yeah. actually correct. Yeah, yeah, so it's a lot of correct stuff in there. So you might even learn something. Breathe in. Hello? I have done some reading. Have you done a medical degree? No. Well, shut up then. So that would have to be our number one. Our number two is Lucifer. So this is a bit different to Doc Martin, whereas Doc Martin is family friendly. I would say Lucifer is kind of next step up in being mm. not so family friendly because it's a bit uh, cheeky and uh, suave and a little bit, I guess, uh, Sexy, I guess, in, a, in almost a cringy way. So what Lucifer is about is essentially that Lucifer, the fallen angel of, you know, um, heaven, ha has gotten sick of running hell, and so he just wants to take a holiday in Los Angeles um, and just ends up getting tied up in, I guess, the crime world of Los Angeles through this detective. Um, and so he finds himself inexplicably inexplicably drawn to the detective and together they kind of solve crimes it's very it's ex exactly as silly as it sounds um and the best part is it doesn't take itself too seriously it's like this is as silly you know <laughs> lucifer is essentially solving crimes when really he shouldn't be anywhere near a crime scene because he is you know the lord of hell 
Um, he obviously is drawn to women, so there are a lot of sex-related jokes. Um, if your little ones are young, uh, it's probably okay. I mean, they don't they don't make it super obvious. Um, mm -hmm. but if you're a little bit older, you 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 get it. You know, it's one of those like he he puns things like that. Um, so in terms of family friendly, it's it's a little bit like it's on the borderline, you know, because yeah, there's yeah. no there's no nudity. There's not really any blood. Um, like uh, there's you know there's some kind of fight scenes, you know, but they're kind of like you know if you watch a police drama, it's kind of those kinds of fight scenes. It's not anything crazy. Um, so I don't. I think if you had children that were very young, it would be fine. And if you had children that were getting a bit older, they could listen and be like, oh, hang on, yeah. they might know. But it's it's a, it's a great show because uh, yeah, I guess it's you can just kind of uh, listen to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can listen mm -hmm. to it. Um, yeah, there's a lot more conversation in that rather than action. Yeah, it's witty banter, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's quite and it's quite cheeky as well. So you yeah. don't you don't mind if you're not paying a hundred percent attention to it because it is so cheeky and silly. It's just like you know, it's okay. I got the feel of what's going on. And um, on like in cross stitch groups, I remember some ladies were talking about Lucifer as well, and they were so ooed over um, how handsome he is. He's very charming. Yeah. Um, also, I've noticed the music choices, the soundtracks are on point mm. so i think that could be one of the i guess attractions um of like young people wanting to watch it yeah it's just a very good kind of thing to have in the background so uh yeah we would definitely rent rate lucifer as a good one to do while you're pretty hopping. high pretty high on there yeah yes and number three is vikings so vikings um if you haven't heard of it it's essentially uh, what you need to know is in the name it's pretty much all about the Vikings focusing on a central character, Ragnar Lothbrok, um, who is actually in history kind of a almost uh, a fictional character that seemed to be involved in lots of major tales of the Vikings. And so what this show tries to do is capture all of these tales um, and string them together into a cohesive story, but also bring in lots of other famous um, things that the Vikings did, did, such as the Siege of Paris and things like that. So actually, historically accurate, all these things did happen, but they didn't happen one after the other with the same people. It's kind of a show that brought, you know, the, the top 10 people in Vikings history and put them into mm. a single 30 year period. Um, so yeah, but we make it sound very exciting, but it's not quite, is it, at the start? No, I've, so the story goes, um, we found it a few years ago, JP recommended it, or JP maybe wanted to watch it. Um, after someone recommended it. I We watched the first episode and got really bored. I got really bored. Um, I think he kept watching. He told me, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. So the first season was flat, boring. But if you kept, like, if you keep going, yeah, it picks up because there are more characters. It's more about, like, Ragnar's family as well. Um, there are quite a few interesting characters. Um... I guess that's what kept us going because mm. um, the show has six seasons. Uh, the good thing is it's finally, like, it's completely done. Um, for me, I I know they have more and more budget as the series goes on and they got more and more famous, partially because it's one of the first series that really talked about the Vikings. But, yeah, there were more actions, like, later on in the seasons, but... The last season really hurt me deeply because I felt like there were so many unanswered questions and I really didn't like how it ended. It's so abrupt to yeah, me. Yeah, there are no spoilers, but anyway. But yes. overall, it's a great series and if you feel at the end of season five you don't need to watch any more, then I would recommend just stopping there. And you've probably already had plenty of Vikings up until that Although point. Although some people did like the ending. Oh, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, Overall, it's a good series in that you've got... It's a very um, progressive storyline that takes a while to unfold, so you can just listen to it. Um, I guess you want to look up for any of the major battles, but at the, in the first few seasons, those battles were more every five episodes or something. So, I mean, you can stop painting um, for a bit and just appreciate that episode with the battle. And same with the stitching, you can just, you know, stitch a little less. But I think overall, it's a, it's a good show for that kind of oh, thing. Oh, another thing to note is... The series 
did try to respect the different languages back then. Mm, so mm. from time to time, you would hear some weird things that you wouldn't. Well, yeah, you'd hear like ancient yeah. French, ancient English. Yeah. Um, but like after a couple sentences, they would generally turn back to English just to show you, mm. okay, now they're having a proper conversation. Um, I guess I respect that because. You, you don't want everything to be changed. You, you want the ancient languages to be to be recognized. Yeah, so. it gives it a good feel. It just means you got to look up for the subtitles in yes, those instances sometimes. where they're, you know, speaking a bit of ancient English. Mm -hmm. One thing about Vikings, though, is it is very bloody. I mean, you kind of expect it. If it, if it didn't have that, then I guess you wouldn't feel like you were really watching Battles of the Vikings. Um, so if you are a bit squeamish um, and you don't want to see that kind of stuff, then I guess this is not for you. Um, you know, Lucifer and Doc Martin are good examples of ones that aren't bloody, but since, you know, we have a wide ranging taste, we like all kinds of shows, uh, Vikings is definitely something for the more squeamish to stay away from, I reckon. Yeah, so there are a lot of adult scenes, so nudity, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, use, yeah. Um, watch it at your own risk maybe when your kids are away or when your kids are adult already so. oh just not with your mum around no okay. so the next choices next two choices we've got were more in hindsight because we watched them before we started hobby together um and upon discussion we thought these two would be appropriate uh, to be included on this list so it's text and supernatural mm. um Dexter is pretty much about a psychopath from young age realizing he has this bloodlust to killing people. Um, to control that or to satisfy that, he justifies his actions by killing bad people well, in his eyes mm. um, and trying to avoid being caught. That's essentially what the storyline is. Um, we watched it. We finished it. We finished it several years ago. Mm. Um, I think we first watched maybe four seasons and then paused a little bit mm -hmm. and then watched the rest like in one go. Um, it's it's just a okay like okay produced series. It's a murder mystery one with an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially doing the murder mystery from the opposite angle. Because, <laughs> yeah, half the time, uh, because, yeah, one of the flip side is his day job is he is a forensics pathologist, right? I think he's a blood pattern expert. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is part of being a forensic yeah, pathologist. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, anyway, so yeah, half the time he is attending this murder scenes or finding the bodies that he's associated with somehow. And mm -hmm. so it's interesting to watch... Um, you know, essentially like, oh no, what mistakes have I done today? Not that he makes many. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a genius, essentially, he's supposed to be, so... But it's, uh, yeah, that one's... A, it, I hobbied back then when we were watching Dexter, but you hadn't started across it no. too. But if we were to watch it, then it would be I think perfect. it would be okay, yeah. I mean, it's a bit bloody, so it might be out of some people's comfort zone, but it's not too bad. You don't see the very gruesome scene, you just see blood. Mm -hmm. so. Our last retrospective one on this list is uh, the mega series Supernatural. Um, now, what's Supernatural? Well, it's pretty much just about uh, all the legends of all kinds of supernatural creatures in the world. They're actually true. And Sam and Dean, who are brothers that are hunters that take down all these different things. And at the start of these series, that's really all it was. It was literally just here's an episode, here's a monster, they will hunt it. And that was that episode. So it started off in that way. Um, but as it progressed, it started, um, I guess, as they gained popularity and budget, they could think of bigger story arcs to go over whole seasons. Um, so things just get crazier and crazier. You know, first they were just trying to hunt down regular old demons, and then suddenly it's the biggest baddies of mythology. So then, yeah, the angels come into play, heavens, hell, all these things. Um, I think there were a lot of discussions about when the series should end. I think it was trying to end multiple times, but maybe it went over to 14 seasons. I think we stopped at eight, seven or eight. Mm. So we already stopped watching it. We might pick it up again, but as, as a long run series, it's, in my opinion, it's getting a bit too much. Well, these, yeah, these episodes are 40 to 50 minutes long. 
there's usually about 20 episodes yeah. per season. Yeah. So you do the math on that. I mean, that's what makes it a really good, like, mm. hobby show because <laughs> you got a big project. Essentially, you'll be able to have Supernatural carry you through the entirety of that project. But it's, uh, yeah, it's very long. Um, but yeah, what's good about it is that, um, I guess, there's obviously there's the dynamic of the characters. You can just listen to them having their, you know, funny banter and things like that and solving the mysteries. Um, it started off relatively low budget, so they didn't have action that often. Mm. So you could, you can get lots of hobby done in between, and then you know that towards the end of the episode is when the action's going to happen as they solve this or that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think most of the time it was, uh, yeah, very good for hobbying. And, it's, and I guess I would call it the, the more supernatural version of the X Files. Um, you know, yes. The X Files is more the sci fi, this is more taking it to the supernatural side. So it's also got the same kind of humor and feel to it in that it's a little bit cheeky sometimes a little bit spooky so if you're mm. I, I've, I know i've got some friends that i was like oh watch supernatural and like oh that's so scary and i'm like well, you haven't seen some horror <laughs> but yeah i mean it, it is a, it does have some scary moments so if you if you can't handle the supernatural kind of spookiness sometimes um then this might not be for you but just know that most of the time it's very kind of just funny so it'll you'll be able to get through it mm. Um, there are a few interesting characters. Well, let's just address the fact that um, Sam and Dean had the best chemistry ever, as mm. I guess two siblings go in the series. Um, and it helps that, like outside the series, they're best friends. Mm. They always hang out together. Um, so you, you can feel it in the series. And I think a lot of people keep going on, um, keep like egging the series on because of them as well. Well, sometimes you just want to see the characters do more stuff. It doesn't have to have the best storyline ever. Um, and the, the good thing is that the dynamics between just these two characters is so interesting because they do throw in different challenges for them, um, both physically and emotionally, that really, you know, test, I guess, their, their relationship between each other because... Mm -hmm. It would be a bit boring if it was always just sunshine. Like they, well, yeah. they also have special episodes, like when it's Christmas. I think they also had a special episode when they traveled to, like, modern world where there was no magic. That, yeah. that episode's quite funny. I think it's yeah. They have some very cheeky episodes. Yeah. So if if you're not, I guess, a long run series fan, maybe pick out those episodes and just watch them. They're so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that would be our top five uh, shows that you can watch while you hobby. Now, if you've got any suggestions, put them in the comments below because we'd be happy to hear them. Uh, hear them. Read them. We can't hear you. Uh, I don't know why I said that. But yeah, we'll read them and maybe we'll be able to watch them. Uh, some of these are available on your streaming platform. Some are not. This is modern day now where things are kind of scattered everywhere. Yeah. That said... We're going to do another episode soon um, of this kind of thing where we kind of, we're not really reviewing, we're kind of reviewing them in our own context. Our next one will be kind of uh, uh, the unsung heroes of uh, shows, which shows are a bit underrated, um, according to us, that, you know, our friends have never heard of. Um, and there'll be five of those. So look forward to that coming soon. Otherwise, enjoy your hobbies. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.